Well, greetings viewers and voyeurs with Got That Funk, and I apologize in advance for all the background noise, but I am, again, in a pub. Uh, this is a video response to my friend Andy Anacontabad, uh, who made a video, a video recently called uh, What Kind of People Should There Be? Where he talked about uh, you know, the advancements in technology and how we are possibly capable of making a better version of human being in the very near future with uh, such things as you know genetic advances and whatever and this set me to thinking because uh, as an avid fan of the Star Trek universe I'm aware that uh, in that particular version of science fiction um, eugenics is just accepted as a, a, a beneficial thing for society for example in um, Star Trek The Next Generation and in Star Trek Voyager there's reference made to how the gene that uh, makes people criminals or gives people criminal tendencies uh, have, have been identified and uh, they are suppressed in the womb before you're born. And it's the same with uh, if you've got some kind of schizophrenia or other kind of mental illness uh, in your genetic code. Uh, this sort of thing would be detected prior to birth and medically suppressed so that it didn't manifest itself uh, when you were growing up and therefore when you become an adult uh, you'll be you know sane and and everything like that without any uh, mental issues now the thing is um, I think Andy you've got a really good point when you say these questions aren't going to go away the, the, the advances will continue and therefore the pressure will mount as the future unfolds itself and sooner or later there are going to be attempts you can guarantee it to try to improve the breed, as it were, with uh, genetical advances and other forms of uh, medical treatments. Um, so I think you're right, the, uh, the genie, as it were, is already out of the bottle in the sense that uh, it tends to be the case that when human beings come up with inventions, we want to utilize them in whatever way. Um, and I can't really see how we can avoid it in the future. You're right, people don't want to talk about it, and I see that as a good thing in a, in a way, but also a bad thing, because as you say, it's bad because these questions aren't going to go away, and people really need to think about it. But that sort of reminds me of um, this thing here on YouTube where Google's been trying to get everybody to uh, sign up to Google+, Plus. and every couple of weeks you'll get a little message saying, do you want to sign up to Google+, Plus? and you'll say no, and they'll say, okay, we'll ask you again later. Well, why will my answer be different later? I said no, and I meant no, and no is what I mean. But they're just going to keep on keeping on until they get the answer that they want, and I feel the same way about... Um, arguments over eugenics, at some point there will be an immense amount of pressure. I mean, let's just say uh, that they could identify uh, which genes activate to make people psychotic. Um, it is a legitimate question as to whether or not it's moral to suppress those genes. Um, you know, we're brought around to the idea that certain traits are unnecessary for the human population to possess. And who gets to make that call? And on what basis? Uh, how do you disassemble someone's personality and pick and choose which parts you want to support? So I don't have any of the answers. Um, my head's just full of questions and curiosity as yours is. But I just wanted to point out about the Star Trek universe that, uh, you know, it's not just the genetic advances which uh, give that science fiction um, you know the, 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 in that future uh, the 23rd century or 24th century rather is um, uh, you know there's no war there's no poverty there's no very little disease um, and people work to improve themselves that's the rhetoric because all their needs are met so they don't need to work for that reason and it's interesting to contemplate whether we would uh, still be human beings and therefore have all those same tendencies towards grouping ourselves between groups of us versus groups of them or if we would indeed have a, a more peaceful society if everybody's needs were met if there was no need for poverty or war uh, because everybody had food shelter and, and uh, the opportunity to do what they wanted with their personal time whether that was you know be a farmer or be a brewer or 
work on a starship or whatever. Um, you know, and you do whatever you want as long as you're doing something and contributing to the whole. And that sounds kind of commie when you say it that way, doesn't it? And I think that's another reason that uh, eugenics and what it implies, um, it also implies this idea like in the old black and white Twilight songs where we're imagining that there can be some kind of idealized person and or idealized society what that would look like, how it would work. Would it make people any happier as well as healthier? Um, this is the question. Um, there's quite a few good episodes of the old Twilight Zone series, the black and white ones, which explore that very question. And you can watch some of them here on YouTube, and if I can be bothered, I'll try and leave a link or two in the uh, description box. Anyway, Andy, I just wanted you to thank you for your video. It set me thinking, and uh, I wish I had a better answer to uh, the question of, you know, what kind of people should we be. Uh, it's my personal opinion, and no matter how many times you try to <clears throat> improve the species, human beings will always be inherently flawed in one way or another. And the search for improvement is always a good thing, but the search for perfection, I think, is misguided and unwise. Is that just an emotional gut reaction? I don't know, but that's the only one I've got. Uh, thank you for your video, and uh, thank you all for watching. And until next time, may all your ups and downs be ups.